Hmm. Okay, we're going to give this another try. I don't know if this fixed it or not. Um, somebody can let me know if they hear me. I had this thing come up today. Can you hear me? Anybody? Is it? <laughs> I, I don't know if, uh, if the sound is working yet or not. You'll have to let me know. Thumbs up, something. Let me know. Let me know and we'll begin. Hello? I can hear you finally. Okay, all right. There you go. Thank you, Stephanie. I appreciate that. All right, so, wow. Loud and clear, she said. Yeah, I, it, 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 the frustrating thing for me is I had another update today that comes up. Would you like to update? And I said, no, skip it. Do it later. But for some reason, when that stuff comes up, I don't know what the problem is, but it throws everything off. Um, but apparently you guys can hear me now, so, ah, oh, that's a bummer, that's a heck of a way to start out, you know what, it could be the Phantom of the Opera messing around with the, uh, in the basement, in the, in the cellar below, below us, uh, reverbing on my speakers, you okay, hold on. That must be... Alright, get lots of pop-ups. These are fun. Oh my gosh! Alright, sorry fellas and guys and ghouls. Yeah, something's, something's really messed up for some reason. I'm getting all kinds of things popping up right now. Um, reverbing my speakers, Renee says. Okay, I am sorry it says too loud. Okay, too loud. All right, well, let's see. We'll turn this down a little bit. Is this working? Is this, is this better? Tom says, you should do all OBS updates that come an odd number of days of the month. Yeah, I'm getting real tired of OBS <laughs> in general. <laughs> uh, Joan Wayne, hello everyone. Are you able to take your iodine pills? My iodine pills? Um, I don't know if this, uh, if this is sounding okay or not. I have no way of knowing that. Other than, you know, oh, Renee says it's good. Okay, all right. Uh, Tracy says, hello from Mr. Tracy. Hey, Tracy, thanks for joining us. We've been we've been the first, uh, over the first 10 minutes, just trying to get the sound right uh, on here. So thanks for everyone who has been uh, hanging in there <laughs> with me. Oh, John Wayne said, it looks like World War III is about to start. Yeah, yeah, all this for, for the iodine pills, yeah. Yeah. Don't turn it down, it's better the other way, Brian. Ah, so I gotta turn it back up? I thought you said it was too loud. All right. All right, so. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know how that's sounding on your end. But apparently we got sound for now. I, I don't know what else to do. John says, and now it's time again for our Tuesday night enjoyment. This is Crozac de Grand, and it's time again for Chiller Night Live. Now here you, here's your host. Here's Brian Hogue. Thank you, Crozac de Grand. Deborah says, good evening, Chiller Thrillers. Hey, Deborah, thanks for joining us. Gremlins in the computer. I know. I know. Um... That kind of that kind of segues a little bit into the the uh, the Phantom of the Opera, which is our topic monster for tonight. Uh, you know, going behind the scenes and 
under the opera and behind the scenes and causing all kinds of mishap and mischief. Um, yes, tonight is, uh, we'll be talking about our topic monster for tonight is the Phantom of the Opera. There, there are more versions of Phantom of the Opera than I was aware of out there. Of course, we're all familiar with the 1925 silent version with uh, Lon Chaney Sr., pictured here as Eric, the Phantom of the Opera. And then we have um, the 1943 version starring Claude Rains as the, uh, as, as the Phantom. And then we have the 1962 Hammer Horror Films version with, um, that's, that's the one here on the, uh, on the end here, with uh, Herbert Lom as, he's not named Eric in this one, it's Professor Piers, I think? Piers? Um, Professor Petrie, that's it. Petrie as the Phantom. So those are the three big, big uh, movie adaptations of it. Um, John Wayne says, the sound problem was very fitting. Phantom of the Opera is a silent film. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's it. Um, Tracy says, high winds too. The Phantom of Paradise, Renee says. That's 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 one of the other. Here's another one that I I didn't even know about. Um, 1989, Robert Englund, who played, of course, uh, uh, Freddy Krueger, played the Phantom of the Opera. I was not aware. I, of course, we know about the Phantom of the Opera, the musical, uh, and Lloyd Webber's musical. Uh, I, when I was over in England, I, I had seen that over in London. I go down to London every once in a while and I didn't see I didn't sit there and see the actual play but I had seen the posters up in downtown uh, to see it but I never did see that um, what else do we have here uh, oh the 2004 movie based on the play based on the musical directly based on the musical um, which I didn't know about that Jared Butler from uh, 300, he played them. Um, so that's that's a little different. Does the Phantom of, of the Paradise count? Brian says, I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know. It could be. It could be. Dark Man, Tracy says, Dark Man, I remember that with uh, Liam Neeson. Um, well, that, that, that almost, that, it did kind of look like him, didn't it? That's what you're referring to. Stephanie says, I've seen the one with Lon Chaney, the one with Claude Rains, the one with Robert England, the one with Julian Sands, I think the one with Jared Butler. Oh, okay. Uh, how about the one with, uh, do you ever see the one with Herbert Lom? He's kind of a neat looking phantom. That's the hammer horror one. That's the one on the end here. Let me get rid of this uh, picture here with um, the one here on the end. But that was a hammer film production, Hammer Films. Al says, hey everyone, Phantom Night. Yes, it sure is. Al, how's it going? We uh, spent the first 12 minutes uh, without sound and trying to get things organized here and, and up and running, so I was about ready to just call it quits. <laughs> I was like, <"Grr." laughs> And then as I was trying to, to, to tweak this thing, I'm having pop-ups like crazy. Um, get in my way. Stephanie says, I also saw the play and read the book and watched the Phantom of the Paradise. Oh, okay. Well, and, and Phantom of the Opera was based on a, uh, based on a, a, a book from, uh, originally published in 1909 as a series, uh, a serial. And then in 19, 1909 to 1910, and in 1910, the, the book, the book in volume form was published. Um, by French author Gas Gaston Leroux. Um, Tracy says, the Phantom knows. <laughs> uh, John says, Herbert Lom went on to play Chief Inspector Dreyfus for the Pink Panther with Peter Sellers as Inspector Clouseau. Yeah, yeah. Did a pretty good job in that as well. Um, actually, out of, out of the... He was a much more, I don't know, the Phantom, the Phantom had more, more uh, you know, a bit of that, um, kind of like the King Kong, the Beauty and the Beast 
type of uh, element to it, you know, slightly there, where, where you have that uh, that pathos for the for the uh, the villain, you know. But Her Herbert Long probably has a bit more of that. He's a little bit more of a friendly uh, phantom, friendly phantom, not real friendly friendly, but he's kind of an anti-hero phantom um, where he actually kind of saves the day at the end. Um, so not not all too monstrous. John Wayne says, which adaption has the most nudity? I, I, I don't know of any that have nudity, but I haven't watched the... I don't know. I mean, I haven't seen a 1989 version, so you never know. In the 80s, oh, that was just uh, slapped on screen left and right. So check that one out. <laughs> SBC, if you want to let me know. Tom says, I see the original Phantom every year at our local historic silent theater. Has a three-story pipe organ built into it. Not too many know how to play those Wurlitzers. I wouldn't imagine. That's probably um, kind of a, a, a dying art, the pipe organs. Um, Kiss meets the Phantom of the Park, Renee says, yeah. I remember when that came out. I, I watched that the night that it actually came on and now here's something maybe somebody can tell me maybe maybe not maybe if you if you want to google this that's fine but i think you speaking of kiss i thought i heard where paul stanley had played the phantom in one of the uh in one of the i don't know if it was on broadway one of the theater adaptations of it you know the the musicals i don't know if that's true for some reason when you when you brought up kiss uh i i was thinking that Freddy the Phantom, Tracy says, yeah. <laughs> Star Wars the Phantom Menace, Renee says. All these phantoms. Uh, and of course, I, I mean, what monster topic is complete without the uh, the vintage Aurora model kit? There's the, uh, that's kind of a strange looking phantom there. That's kind of a mix of... Um, well, the Phantom, the, 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 the kit itself does look like the, uh, the Lon Chaney Sr. Um, version, I suppose. And then this is kind of a neat look for the Phantom, the, the Red Death uh, costume at the, at the uh, masquerade uh, scene in the movie. There of course, is uh, Lon Chaney Sr. And uh, Lon Chaney Sr., here he is right there. The Man of a Thousand Faces! And that was a very big role of his, of course, playing the Phantom, Eric the Phantom. Uh, Billy Zane the Phantom. <laughs> yes. And, and Phantom 2040. What is that? Is that a movie or is that an animation or uh, Phantom model looks a little like Dracula? Yeah. It does, doesn't it? Um, yeah, it looks a little bit like Dracula. And of course... Once again, one of those things I got to do is show the old uh, Crest Wood House books, monster books, and that's the cover. And that that right there is that looks like Claude Rains' uh, Phantom. There, the 1943. It was 1943, but it was it was in color. So, but that's the cover that they use. I'm surprised they didn't use. You know, kind of the traditional, um, you know, that look with the Lon Chaney Sr. So, what else do we have here? I think that's about it. Um, Daniel says, sup, Brian? Gemma is with me watching. All right, well, welcome to both of you, and thanks for joining us for the show tonight. We got off to a little bumpy start. Here, we didn't have any audio for about the first 12 minutes. Uh, John says, today is birthday of everyone's favorite logical alien, the one and only Leonard Nimoy. Fun fact, one of his earliest films was... I'm going to wait for John to finish that. That's right, I did see William Shatner posting something about uh, Leonard Nimoy's birthday. William Shatner's birthday was just the other day. Uh, Stephanie says, Lon Chaney's Red Death costume almost looked like the one from Red Mask of Death or something like 
with Vincent Price. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. That's a neat looking. That's a really cool looking. Uh, I've seen. I've seen like. I think I've seen like uh, like figures of that made just of that costume. Uh, John Wayne says for a 2024 version, which actor would you cast as the Phantom? Hmm. Which actor would I cast as the Phantom? That's a good question. I'm trying to, and I'm trying to. You know which one came up came to mind? Uh, the first one that came to my mind was the guy who played, and, and it's only because of the comparison with the, you know, the shrouded behind the mask and all that, uh, you know, hiding and you know, having to be in hiding. And but the the guy who played on V V for Vendetta. Um, I, I don't know. That's, a, that's just the first, that's the first thing that come to mind. Um, but what do you guys think? Renee says, Phantom 2040 was a cartoon by the animators of Eon Flux, which later became a live action movie starring Charlie's Theron. Okay, so it's an animated one. All right. Jason says, Leonard Nimoy's greatest opus was the ballad of Bilbo Baggins. Yeah, <laughs> right. And Tracy, Tracy mentions that as well. Uh, Renee says, Defender of the Earth cartoon had a Phantom too. Yeah, yeah, that's right. They had the Phantom on there. Jason says, the red Phantom costume you just put up always frightened me as a kid. Yeah, I know. That looks so, so creepy. So, so creepy. But I do love... I just love that look. That's the classic. To me, that's that's what I always think of when I think of the Phantom of the Opera. So, not that the other movies weren't weren't good. I I, I do like I, I like the Hammer version, but not near as well as you know. This is what I think of when I think of the Phantom of the Opera. Um, Stephanie says Hugo Weaving. That's it. That's it. I don't know what he do. I, I I don't know how would he do. I again. I'm only I'm I'm only just uh, shooting from the hip here from the the initial question of who would who would I think of? Well, I kind of think of that character as phantom like. You know, I mean, not 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 in how he was described in the book or anything like that, but just like going by the characteristics that we see in the movie. You know, him hiding and dwelling in the in the having to be in 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 hiding, you know, and, and wearing and always being behind the mask because of his distorted features. Now, this character, Eric, this is the, uh, I forget which company made these characters here, um, but I got all the you know, the Universal Monsters, and of course I had to get the Phantom. Um, the, the book just describes them as deformed, just deformed. And the way Lon, Lon Chaney Sr., did the makeup. He actually did it to, um, with the description that the, that the novel gave, you know, even with the nose and everything, the, the basically said the deformity of his face made it so his, he hardly even had a nose, just in side view of him, you, you hardly even saw anything as a nose. So, and his eyes were all sunken, yellow skin and, and all that. But the, the other movies, um, well, 1943, Claude Rains in 1962 with Herbert Long, they both, in those versions, he had a one where uh, Claude Rains, he had some acid thrown on him, and that distorted his face or, you know, scarred his face, and then uh, Herbert Long's Phantom, he was uh, hurt in a fire, you know, and had some fire come back on his face and burned it, so... Um, oh, but you know, here's an interesting thing for for um, the Robert Englund version. His Phantom. Now it's a little bit more supernatural because he he made a deal, basically a kind of the Faust and the Devil type of uh, scenario. There, he made a deal with the devil, and um, with, in exchange for I think the talent, you know, and the singing and all, and all that. Um, and I didn't see it, so I can't, I'm not, but, but from what little I, I kind of uh, gathered from the synopsis, he made that deal with the devil, and that began to wear away his face. And so, 
this phantom or his phantom actually would would wear the skin of his victims. He would kill people and and wear their skin as his, as his face. So, um, and they kept dying off. He'd get had to get new uh, face transplants. <laughs> um, oh, D says Hugh Jackman would make a good Phantom. Okay, there's another one. Uh, Renee says, I used to watch In Search of in the 70s, and it was hosted by Leonard Nemo. I, I remember that. I used to watch that as well. Um, Tracy says, Spawn. Yeah, kind of a Spawn aspect to him, you know, with a, with a distorted face underneath the mask. Um, D says, or Jack Black has the voice for it. Interesting. Interesting. I would have never thought of Jack Black. But yeah, he can hit those tones. Uh, Stephanie says, Antonio Banderas would be a good Phantom. Also, Hugo Weaving did play the Red Skull. Oh! Oh my gosh, that's true! That's true. Maybe that's maybe in the back of my mind I was thinking of him as Red Skull as well. But I maybe subconsciously, because my, in the forefront of my mind I was thinking of V. But that's true, he played the Red Skull. That's a neat look. Bonehead says, hey, hello, Brian. Hey, Bonehead. Thanks for... Oh, you're on Facebook. I was thinking, why does that look different to me? All right. Um, and he says, yeah, his face was all messed up. John says, fun fact, Leonard Nimoy was born in Boston, Massachusetts. His first science fiction film role was playing a Martian in the cliffhanger series Zombies of the Stratosphere and had a brief appearance in the movie Them as an army sergeant who gives the information, who gives an information update. Interesting. A Martian, eh? Well, he was supposed to originally be a Martian in Star Trek, and then they changed it from Martian, from Mars to uh, Vulcan. So, because uh, they were originally going to have his face red, because he's from Mars, I guess that the red planet. But then uh, they got concerned about with the pointed ears that he might look a little, little, little bit too much like the devil, and uh, that's not a message that they wanted to convey for one of the good guys. Uh, John says, "We know one thing from films: in a deal with the devil, the devil always wins." Yeah, don't want to make a deal with the devil. I think a lot of hip hop artists and Folks in Hollywood and probably a, a, a ton of politicians have done that. And, uh, well, I think that's going to circle back to bite him in the you-know-what. Um, Jason says, have you seen Phantom of Paradise? I have not seen that one. It was Paul Williams' movie with the original score and also started, started the lead in the original Suspera. Excellent movie. I've actually never seen that, but I did see that come up today when I was looking at the various versions. There are quite a bit of Phantom of the Opera versions that I, I didn't know of. Uh, Bonin says, Brian, you're not on YouTube and I can't comment on Facebook, but I'm here for what it's worth, lol. Well, I have other YouTube viewers on here commenting and watching, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Maybe when that messed up in the beginning, somehow, somehow that, uh, messed your YouTube view viewing up. Um, <laughs> Lord knows. Uh, Stephanie says, where is his victim skin on his face? Good Lord, he's worse than Ed Gain and Leatherface, right? Jones says, Lon Chaney based his look on the dead man who was dead a few months with his sunken facial features, right? But he also, uh, he actually, also actually, that was the description and he was aware of the description in the book and because of the nose and everything, he he uh, he was inspired also from the, the the description in the novel. Al says Lon was the best Phantom. He definitely looked the best. Bonin says I can't see if my comments are posting here on Facebook. Are they, Brian? Please let me know if you would. Please and thanks. I see them. I mean, I'm I'm having no no problem seeing them on here. Uh, Bonehead. John Wayne says. Have we ever had a female phantom? Ah, very good question. I don't know. I don't know about that one. Uh, not that I'm aware of. Let's see. Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider? 
Tracy says. Um, I like the Phantom of the Paradise. Interesting. Now that's been brought up a couple by a couple of you, and I've not seen that one. Deal with the devil, Tracy says. Oh, deal with the devil with the ghost rider. Okay, I got you. I got you. Stephanie says one of the songs I really like from the Phantom of Paradise was a song called Old Love. Ah, yeah, I've never, never seen that one. Um, Bonehead says, I got you on t YouTube now, Brian. I'm here. Hello, Chilla Night Crew and Brian. Hey, Bonehead. Well, welcome to your leap over to, to YouTube. Paul says, Brian, all my rowdy friends are here for Chiller Night. Mentioned the theme song that we talked about. Well, Paul had mentioned how he wanted to do a theme song for this. <laughs> I don't know who you're going to get to sing it. Uh, <laughs> Stephanie says, hi, Bones. Brian says, Phantom of the Paradise is on my personal 10 best films list. Is that right? Wow. Okay. I it, it, Now, several of you have mentioned this movie, and I've, I've not seen it. Not seen it. In fact, I just heard of it today when I was looking for Phantom of the Opera stuff. John, John Wayne says, Biden will soon be on a warmer, in, on a warmer place, a much warmer place. <laughs> Paul says, hey there, Stephanie, Renee, Born, Tom, SBC. Paul says, Tracy. Jason says, Phantom of the Paradise is a Faust theme, too. Excellent movie. It has some musical elements, too, but I recommend it. Now, Phantom of, of the Paradise, or Phantom of Paradise, or of Paradise, is, is, is that, is it supposed to be a version of Phantom of the Opera? I'm not. I, I don't know about that movie. Is that what it is? And if so, that's a, it's interesting that they would kind of make that, that uh, Faust deal with the devil aspect to it, like they did with the Robert Englund uh, version of it. Renee says, hello, Paul. And there, there's a lot of uh, emojis. <laughs> okay. <laughs> John Wayne says, hello, Bonehead. Yeah. So we are at uh, 8.36, and that should come as no surprise whatsoever, because as quickly as this hour does go normally, and that's without the first 12, 13 minutes without uh, technical issues, uh, I'll take a moment to um, uh, talk about, let me just uh, make my shameless plug for the Chiller Night Escape Experience horror-themed escape rooms at the Cranberry Mall in Venango County, Pennsylvania. I have to keep emphasizing Venango County because people think that it's the Cranberry Mall down near Pittsburgh and Allegheny County, and that's not the case. So, uh, Venango County, we have the Zombie Outbreak Escape Room. That one, uh, that one goes over pretty well. We have Jack Shadow's House of Terror, seasonal, of course. And so looking forward to starting on the modifications for this coming year. And the Witching Hour, which um, is coming along really well. I'm, I'm very happy with this one. And uh, hope, hope this will be done by next month. We will see. We will see. And uh, there's a picture of the store there as you're looking in from inside the mall. Here's another angle of it. You can kind of see the uh, the entrance, the doorway there of Jack Shadow's House of Terror. It looks really, really super cool uh, during op you know during the operation of it when the lights are all out and you just got a few lights on and you see that red glow from inside. And then uh, there's another version or angle of it. You can see the uh, zombie outbreak straight ahead in the center there. Witching Hour is the escape room on the, uh, the far right there. So there you have it. There you have it. I'll jump back to webcam here. Um, Renee says, yes, uh, Paradise is like opera, Brian. Okay, okay. Tom says, Phantom of Paradise. Faust, Phantom of the Opera, Rocky Horror Picture Show. Okay, <laughs> cool. Paul says, I love the shirt, Brian. Oh, thank you. Thank you. A little bit of Mando there. Um, Jason says it's a version of the Phantom with a strong Faust overtone. Actually, Paul Williams' character steals the lead character's opera in the story unfolds. Interesting. That's that's neat. A lot of you seem to have seen that one. That's that's that sounds pretty cool. I have not 
Patty says boo. Patsel Van, boo! <laughs> well, welcome, Patty. Thanks for joining us. Um, Brian says Phantom of Paradise was directed by Brian De Palma, a little Phantom of the Opera, a little Dorian Gray, a little Frankenstein, and a really good soundtrack. Interesting. Wow. That sounds like a good one. Uh, Renee's Horror Night Escape Experience Room. Yes. And I have, I have a third one that I will be building, but I, I don't know if I'll have that. I don't know if I'll have the third one open to the public before, before I'm really uh, focusing on the haunted house. I, I, in fact, I know I won't. But I think I'll have it built. And then after the haunted house this year, I'll be able to open it to the public. But so that's my goal. Anyways, um, bonuses. Watch the commercials have no sound. No, I'm not being mean. Well, we'll see. No, we won't. <laughs> Good. I give up. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> Uh, Renee says, wow, nice small store. Oh, thank you, Renee. I appreciate that. John Wayne says, since we're talking about phantoms, do any of you know the phantom movie, phantomous movies from France? Oh my gosh, no, I've never heard of those. Um, let's see. Paul says, it would definitely be a cool song. <laughs> okay, you, you write one. I don't have no promises, though. Um, Renee says, was that place originally a jewelry store, Brian? It was a clothing store. It was a clothing store. And, and it was, um, I don't know what, I, what oh, well, I'll take that back. I don't know what it was originally, originally, because the, the mall was built back in, I think it opened up back in 80 or 81. I do remember when it opened. It was a, man, it was such a big, as all malls in the 80s were a big deal. Uh uh, but I don't remember. I, I seem to recall. I tell you what. I have to actually have the, the the layout, the blueprints of it, of the original floor plan in my store. Uh, the the mall uh, manager gave me a copy. So that's really cool to look back and see what stores were there. Um, but yeah, it was a clothing store before I got it. Patty says, working alone at Walmart tonight. Paul, oh, you're working, working alone at Walmart. Hmm. Well, hopefully we can lift your spirits. Uh, Stephanie says, your escape rooms, each one of them, 10 out of 5 stars. Oh, that would, hey, that sounds awesome. Um, it's weird because I can have, I can have like five groups go through in a row and, no, no, and, and not make it. And then I might have two in a row that do make it through. It's so weird. Like, I think I have it figured out right now to where it's like 70% success rate. But it's so... there's There almost seems to be no rhyme or reason to it. Um, but I, I, I even if people don't make it through, I know they have a good time. They have a fun time with it. Um, John says, fun fact. What? I don't know what this name is. Leopoldo Antonio Carrillo played Singor Ferretti in the 1943 Phantom. Went on to play on the Cisco Kid as Cisco partner Poncho. Okay. That's cool. I, yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> I really didn't know that. Um, Paul says, I'm with you in spirit. Patty and Manos is with you. We have your back. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Manos. Uh, Paul, uh, Patsy Van says, uh, Paul put the commercials on YouTube and give people the link. Bonin says, okay, never mind, Brian. They don't have any video. I feel for you, and I'm not making fun of you. See what happens when you follow the Bonin rules of technical appliances. LOL. I couldn't even get the sound to work, let alone my commercial. Let's see if it works again. Chiller Night Escape Experience presents Zombie mm -hmm. Outbreak Escape Room. You and your team of scientists are sent to inspect a top-secret laboratory in a hidden military bunker. Sinister experiments have resulted in reanimating the dead. The facility is now swarming with the living dead, and you have one hour to escape or be overrun by zombies. Can you survive a zombie outbreak? Book your escape room appointment to find out. 
Book online at chillernight.com or call 814-209-8214. Gift certificates available at the store counter. <laughs> All right. Hey, something went right. Not on the first try, obviously. But, uh... <laughs> And he says, clothes department, I see. Could have been a shirt, a shirts plus. Oh. <laughs> Is that where you got the creature shirt? <laughs> Your space was next to Aladdin's castle. Yeah, and also, Jason, uh, actually part of, there's another section of the store that the public doesn't see that was part of Aladdin's castle. It actually was part of uh, the Aladdin's castle. So, um, so I got a little bit of the arcade actually in my store, <laughs> which is pretty cool because that was my favorite place to go. Uh, let's see. Jason says, where did you get your phantom statue in your desk? I don't know where I got that. It's actually like a, a like an action figure type of thing. He's all, all posable, articulated. Uh, I don't remember. I, I remember, I, I think, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is there a store? Uh, Hills became, what, is it, was it Ames? It was either Hills or Ames out at the, out at the mall, uh, at the Cranberry Mall, back in, it was either 99 or, or 2000. It was, it was very shortly after I first moved up here from Pittsburgh, uh, back to my hometown. Let's see. Probably depends on how their minds are wired to helps or hinders him in the escape room. Yeah, they have to get into that. Uh, as people ask me, is it scary? Is it scary? Is it jump scares or you know zombies come out after you? It's like no, not no. It's nothing like that. I can't say there's no jump scares. There's a few times I hear people um, kind of scream a little bit, but. Um, they're startled with a couple things that happened in there, but overall, no, not necessarily. the The theme is basically I like to, I, I I kind of explain it like that's the window dressing. That's just like the the you know it's the book you're reading. It's the aesthetic. It's it's you know the whole the the main thing is you're you're get your mind in that in that mindset of solving the puzzles, you know, riddles and all that. That's what you're. You need to be focused on, not necessarily the, the the layout or the the aesthetics. Um, you know, whether it be a, a, a western or Alice in Wonderland or, or zombies. You know. Um, bonus says, "Damn, you got it, Brian." Yes, <laughs> I know. I was not expecting that, with the way that this evening's uh, show has has gone. Uh, quite truthfully. Um, Renee says, are there any escape room t-shirts, beanies, uh, caps, hoodies, merch? Is there a gift store? Well, there was, there's going to be, but I changed my mind in, in how soon I will put it in. The reason is, here's my dilemma. I am by myself, and so if I want to build something out there, I have to shut the store down. The store is not open completely. Like it, 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 it's opening up in phases. It will not be completely open until next year, because I'm building it, and that means I have to shut the gate. I have to keep the gate shut because people will come back. I'm back here with power tools. I'm working, and I, I can't. There's no way I can do both, and, and so, I, I was going to have a gift store open sooner but I thought what happens then what happens when I get the gift store then I can't be up there manning the counter there's only basically one one or two days where right now when I'm in the building process of things where I'm able to actually man the counter and that's on Fridays and Saturdays uh, I'm, I close it down on Sundays just so I can have one day off from any job <laughs> you know, one day off a week that I get to spend with Ava, and uh, and so I I'm taking I take Sundays off, but once I get back into the modifying for the haunted house and and building my third escape room, I can't wait to tell you that theme. That'd be pretty cool. There's gonna be like five escape rooms in there at least, 
when all is said and done. Plus a gift store, but the gift store, to, uh, I guess the, the 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 long answer that I, I apparently am giving you is uh, that it, it won't be until probably next year, or or if I do open the store, it would be right before we open the haunted house so that I have merchandise at the counter. So, but I decided to push that on the back burner a little longer. Bonus says, the operation was a success and the patient lived. Way to go, Brian. Thank you, Bonehead. Um, <laughs> John Wayne says, I have an idea. How about Manos meets the opera's phantom? What do you think, Paul? I don't know. Um, Stephanie says, my mom's birthday on Thursday, and it's also the opening day of Cincinnati Reds baseball game, so I took a day off to enjoy it with her. Oh, that's nice. It's very nice. Paul says, I love you guys very much. I hope that's obvious. Well, we're glad you can join us. Glad when you uh, make it here t uh, on Tuesday nights. Grace us with your presence and, and, and your talk of manos. Uh, Renee says, awesome at Phantom of the Opera action figure. Okay, John says, fun fact, the first Phantom had the use of Keller and was used for the ballroom dance where Chaney appeared in the Red Death costume. The 1943 Phantom was the first Phantom movie to appear in Keller. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty neat. I, I, I remember seeing a thing on how they did that. And it was like they had three uh, reels of film at once. And, and they had the different uh, tones of color or tints on them that made it appear. I, I, I thought I was going to be able to explain that better, but after I got like a sentence into it, I thought, uh, just, just let it go. Uh, Patty says, Brian, any plans for April 8th? No, just going to work. <laughs> How about you guys? Any plans for the eclipse? The eclipse day? Um, let's see. Let me jump ahead here because I know I'm I'm really far behind. Um, Bonus says, Brian, I wish I, I could succeed like that in anything. Hold on, I dropped my pencil to tap my text out. <laughs> Any easy to pick up stuff whenever you're a skull, I, I can imagine. With no coordination or talent or arms. Uh, Paul says, damn it, now I'm crying in a very happy way. <laughs> I'm glad it's in a happy way. Um, yes. Bonus says, hope you're feeling better and recovering from your surgeries. Absolutely. Patty says, Brian, can I make my own zombie escape room shirt at Walmart like I made the Chiller Night shirt? Sure. Yeah, if you want to. Absolutely. Um, Paul says, have you guys ever seen a 57 year old man cry from happiness I I don't think so <laughs> not, not on this end of the camera I don't see uh, Raymond says Brian hey Raymond thanks for joining us D says you could have a display case of items and have an online only store until you can man an IRL store you know the only problem that's an that's a very good idea and and I will do that eventually the thing is, I'm so terrible at, at like, signing autographs, like Jack Shadow, not Brian Hogue, but Jack Shadow, you know, the, to send the autographs out. It's it's tough for me to do that because, be you know, as easy as that does sound, I, I it's, it's not because <laughs> I've got so much going on and then by the time I'm done at work, the, the post office is, is basically closing unless I, I rush there. And, and so that's not something that, that I, I, I tend to be real good at, at following up on. Um, but once I get, here's my thing. I, I feel like once I get everything built, you know, and all this, all of this is off of my shoulders, and I can actually open that store up and run it full time, then, then, things will be that's why I keep telling people like I I'm, I'm trying to make videos every Saturday there on on Facebook and stuff like hey folks you know just letting you know the the chill and I escape experience we are open however we're opening up in phases um, it's, you know and I you know it's weird because 
the, the, the couple groups that I had this week, there they didn't. If you looked online, those those dates and times were not available. But they called, you know. So that's what I tell folks, you know, if they come in and if they don't see a, a day and time available on the on the site on the website, just give me a call. Chances are, I'll just I'll I'll, I'll make the trip in if I'm not if I'm not already there, and I'll open up for them. Um, Let's see. Let me let me skip ahead and and uh, Renee says Jack Shadow action figure. That's what Patty got me, custom made, sitting back here. See it? <laughs> That'd be cool to have one though. That way, you know, in, in mass production for me to sell. That would be pretty neat. Uh, I, let's see. Tracy's gonna hide in the basement for the eclipse. Okay, well that's one way to to go about it. Uh, Paul says, guys, I have to go, uh, help mom get ready for bed. See you next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. I love you and be safe out there. Have a great chiller week. I love you. All right, Paul, thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, Renee says, I saw Finn with the opera and Creature from the Black Lagoon when I was young, thinking I was going to get scared, but it wasn't even scary. The background intense music tried to make you scared, but it wasn't right, right? Yeah. Um... Creatures feature. Let's see. Trying to trying to get caught up here. I'm really far behind here. Um, let's see. Let me. Stephanie says, "Oh, bones! It's my mom's birthday it's Thursday. Sorry for the misinfo. Whoops. Uh, just a bonehead, I think." Uh, John Wayne says, "I almost forgot to mention it, but the first of April is a historic day here in Germany. This is the day marijuana gets legalized. Oh yeah." <laughs> <laughs> All right, hey, April, Fool oh, April Fool's Day. Ah, <laughs> are they messing with you? Maybe they're messing with you. Um. <laughs> Renee says, "Buckle up your tin foil aluminum hats." Yeah, there's a lot of weird things you you, you hear um, about April eighth. But it says, "Tom Paisley, you still out there, or did I annoy annoy you?" <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, is Tom still there? Um. John says, this has been a chiller night live. Oh, I guess it is the, uh, at the end of the hour here. With Brian Hook, this is Krozak the Grand reminding you to get your tickets for Kong, Godzilla, the New Empire, playing this Friday. Oh, it starts this Friday. Until next week, have a good Easter weekend. Stay chilled and keep thrilled. That's right. It is Easter Sunday coming up, so everybody have a happy Easter. Uh, Stephanie says, my mom and I got glasses for the eclipse. Ah, Ava bought some. Ava did buy some. I don't know if I'm going to get a chance to go out there. I'm not sure. We're both going to be working that day, so I don't know if I'll step out and if she'll step out. We're, we're, we're going to be in different locations. But um, stay safe, all, Patty says. You too, Patty. Thanks for joining us. And it says, well, happy birthday to your mom, Miss Stephanie Press, and many more. Yes. Happy birthday to her. And uh, it's 8.58. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, that that is, uh, I, it, it's too bad that we spent the first uh, 10, 12, 13 minutes um, trying to get the, the, the audio working here tonight. So next week we'll just have to do better, by golly. Um, Stephanie says, I'm planning on watching the new Ghostbusters movie next week. Ah, well, let us know how that goes. I'm kind of curious to see the new Beetle, Beetlejuice movie, too. Uh, Renee says, April Fool's. Hope Germany legalized medical marijuana. John Wayne, two to four in pen. Um, Patty says, Jason says, as always, thank you very much for this, Brian. Oh, thank you, guys, all of you. You're very welcome. Uh, thank you for awesome live, live showtime, Renee says. Oh, you're you're very welcome. Thank you, guys. Patty says two to four p.m. in Pennsylvania for the eclipse. Oh, okay, I got you. I got you. Uh, Stephanie says next week's topic: Bigfoot. Well, yeah. I mean, I did have Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde, Brian Frankenstein, Visible. You know what? We can do Bigfoot, and then we'll do and then we'll do those ones later. You guys want to do Bigfoot uh, as a topic next week? We could do that. So. And then we can just do the others as we go. Happy Easter, everyone. Have a good night, Al says. Um, 
Raymond says later, Gators. All right, Raymond, see ya. All right, everybody, thanks for joining me and each other for another Chiller Night Live. Have a good night. Have a good Chiller Night. We'll see you next week, and have a very happy Easter. See ya.